to let this global government uh, governance arise. He says more intensive efforts to shape a new world monetary structure will have to be undertaken with some consequent risk to the present relatively favorable American position. Yeah, they come at us through economics and through currency. Going back to the Bilderberg Group's second meeting, uh, 40, uh, sorry, 60 years ago. We saw these minutes released six years ago. And again, Paul Joseph Wasson, one of our reporters who is on his way now to this year's Bilderberg uh, in Austria, wrote this at the time, six years ago, when this was released by WikiLeaks. He said, in 2003, a BBC investigative team was allowed to access Bilderberg files, which confirmed that the EU and the euro were the brainchild of Bilderberg. So it's nothing new to have a secretive uh, meeting between corporations and governments to create world governance. We can see that's now in the open with these trade agreements. The document outlines a plan. It says, quote, to arrive in the shortest possible time at the highest degree of integration, beginning with a common European market. That was their goal. That's from the minutes of the 1955 Bilderberg meeting. He said just two years later, in 1955, we saw the first incarnation of the European Economic Community, the EEC. It was comprised of a single market between Belgium, France, Germany, Italy, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. The EEC gradually enlarged over the next few decades until it became the European Community. Then it enlarged again to become the European Union, officially created in 1993. So you see the pattern of gradual consolidation. Now, of course, their pattern of doing this is to consolidate regionally, then to consolidate those regions into a world governance. That's why we saw this being done in Europe, and then simultaneously, it was being done in North America. The Trilateral Commission was set up to work on three different areas, North America, Europe, and Asia. What do we see now? We see that America which has been the center where they put everything, the UN, all these different uh, globalist uh, organizations. We have a heavy presence in America. And of course, America is now going to unite with uh, Pacific countries and with the European countries. But doing so in a way that is going to give the corporations, the multinational corporations, that is, just a few multinational corporations, it is going to give them control over everything. So you can see the stepping stones of gradual consolidation going back again to the 1955 Bilderberg summary. They say it might be better to proceed through the development of a common market by treaty rather than by the creation of new high authorities. And we're going to talk when we come back about why these are treaties and why this fast-track authority, the TPA, that was just passed by the Senate that is coming up before the House, is a treacherous agreement that denies the process for approving treaties. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Joining us in the next segment to explain the Trans-Pacific Partnership is going to be Alex Jones. In this segment, I want to talk a little bit about what we saw in terms of Government officials being held captive, essentially, if you will. I guess we should call them really vassals. Uh, that's really kind of the appropriate analogy, I think. Because it really, if you go back and you think about the Magna Carta, think about Runnymede, what happened there. We had a situation there where the nobility came up to evil King John and said, uh, we have this giant charter. That's, that's what the Magna Carta was, a giant charter. They said, we are going to uh, devolve power from the center. It was the beginning of the kind of democratic republics that we now have throughout the West or that we have seen throughout the West. They have now uh, essentially uh, become vassals of these multinational corporations. And the reality is, is that just like the Magna Carta, power had already transferred away from King John to these uh, few people in the nobility. In the same way, power has also transferred away from the governments that we have to the multinational corporations. They're able to write this just like you had the nobleman write the Magna Carta and present it to King John and say, sign it. They didn't ask if he approved of it. They didn't ask him to read it. He wasn't going to be given the ability to amend it. They had the power. What they were seeking was the formal recognition of that transfer of power. And if you want to think about these partnership agreements, as I call them, that's precisely what they are. They're formal recognition of the fact the power has already passed to these multinational corporations. Hasn't it passed? 
I mean, they can come to these senators, they can come to congressmen of every nation, and they can tell them, you're not going to be able to tell anybody what you see in this thing. Uh, you can't make any notes and take these notes with you. They defy them to even talk about what they have written. And they have, with this fast-track trade agreement that ran through the Senate, they have put in process a, uh, a procedure that is not going to be able to stop these agreements. So when they vote for the Trade Promotion Authority, the Fast Track Authority, they are, by proxy, voting for these partnership agreements, the Transatlantic, the Trans-Pacific, and others that are going to come down the road, because this is going to last for six years. This is far broader than this, just the TPP and the TTIP. This is going to go for six years, and just this last week, we found out about yet another uh, agreement. That's the uh, TISA. That's the Transfer in uh, Serv Trade and Services Agreement. It's a new one. Trade and Services Agreement, the TISA. That's one I didn't even know about. It's hard to keep up with these things, and they're going to be coming fast and furious because they're going to be created by the executive branch, by Obama. They're going to be presented to the legislature, and here's how this process that the Senate has approved that still has to be approved by the House. But this is what the Senate approved last week. Typically, when a bill becomes law, it has to go through committees. So it can be stopped, it can be modified in committees uh, before it goes to the floor. The leadership has a say as to whether or not it's going to go to the floor. It can be amended or stopped at any of these procedures. Not so with these agreements. Once these things are handed to the legislative bodies, they will have 45 days to send it to the floor. So they can make it quicker but they can't take longer than 45 days because if they don't put it on the floor for a vote in 45 days, it will go there automatically. They cannot stop it in committee. The leadership cannot stop it. It will go to the House floor. They will have 20 hours to debate it. They will not be allowed to have any amendments. And here's the key thing. It will pass forward with a simple majority vote of 51 not with the 67 votes that would be needed for a treaty. So if you want to look at it, this TPA that was just passed in the Senate was an act of treason against the Constitution by the 62 senators who voted for it. And let's understand who voted for it, because I've seen a lot of criticism of uh, senators unjustly, uh, people unjustly criticizing Rand Paul, even criticizing us, saying, hey, you're, you're criticizing this trade agreement, but you love Rand Paul because he voted for it. He didn't vote for this. He voted against the TPA. Some people have confused the two votes. There was a vote to stop the filibuster and go to a vote for the TPA. He voted for that, as did Senator Sessions and others. All the Republicans who were present voted for that. But there were at least five Republicans and many Democrats, people like uh, uh, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, who spoke up against this. They voted against the Trade Promotion Authority, the Fast Tracked Authority. And this is what Senator Sessions has said. Now, he and Rand Paul were a couple of the only senators who even bothered to go down and look at what they could see at this current uh, point from the uh, trade representatives, he wrote yet another letter to Barack Obama. He says, on May 6th of this year, I sent you a letter regarding your request for Congress to grant you fast-tracked executive authority. So he just sent him this letter at the end of this last week. So he said, I'm including that again, and here are my concerns. He says, under fast track, Congress transfers its authority to the executive and agrees to give up several of its most basic powers. Exactly. They're giving up the power to write legislation. They're giving up the power to amend legislation. They're giving up the power to fully consider legislation on the floor. They're giving up the power to keep debate open until Senate cloture is invoked. And most importantly, they are giving up the constitutional requirement that treaties receive a two-thirds vote. He gets to the point. He doesn't play around with words. He's one of the few people to come out and say, this is a treaty. It is a treaty. It's a lie to say that it is a trade agreement or a partnership. It is a treaty. And as such, the constitutional requirement is that you get a two-thirds vote. Good for Senator Sessions, Jeff Sessions, to say that. He says that, the latter, the fact that it is a treaty that needs a two-thirds vote, 67 votes. He said that is especially important since having been closed Having been to the closed room to review the secret text of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it is clear that it more closely resembles a treaty than a trade deal. And he says, fast track through Congress would be pre-clearing a political and economic union. 
understand, political union, not just an economic union, a political union. He understands where this is going. He knows that this is a treaty. He knows that this is a political union, not simply an economic union. Before a word of that agreement has been made available to a single private citizen. That is key. Senator Sessions has gone to the core of the issue. This is like the Enabling Act that the Reichstag passed to essentially divest their legislative powers to Adolf Hitler. Our Congress has done the same thing to Obama in the area of these so-called trade agreements. They are more than trade agreements. As Senator Sessions pointed out, they are political and economic union. And our Congress, our Senate, has essentially signed what is, this, what is the enabling act of the 21st century, saying we give up our legislative duties and responsibilities and powers to the dictator in chief, the president. You will be able to do everything that we, under the Constitution, were supposed to do. The Reichstag, the German legislative body, surrendered all of its power to the executive. And that is precisely what this fast track process is. You need to contact the House. This is on a fast track to going through. It goes on to point out that it creates a new transnational commission that is chartered with a living agreement clause. He said under this new commission, the Sultan of Brunei would have an equal vote to that of the United States. And I would point out so would Monsanto and other multinational corporations. They would do that via the investor state court. The IS court, that kind of IS, is another IS created by our, uh, our government, not just the Islamic State, but now the investor state is coming after us as well. He says to adopt fast track is to agree to remove the constitutional protections against the creation of a global governance structure before those structures are even made public. This is what Senator Sessions says, one of the few people who has read the agreement, who has bothered to read the agreement. Remember, Orrin Hatch, when an amendment was offered in the Senate by uh, Elizabeth Warren and others to make this public, Orrin Hatch uh, shut it down. And when he was asked if he had read it, he says, no, I'll be one of the most interested people to see what's in that. He wasn't interested enough to go and actually look at it. Stay with us. When we come back, Alex Jones is going to break down the TPP for you. We'll be right back. Globalists are counting on us not getting upset. They're counting on our normal instincts to stand up against usurpation. Against they are targeting our normal human instincts for survival, and they're turning them off. There's a lot of reasons for this, how we've been culturally engineered into this zombie trance-like state that even mainstream news and medical studies show the general public is in. I mean, if you play our video games every day, it literally kills areas of your cerebral cortex. That was in the London Telegraph and Associated Press just last week. And the reason I open this alert with that information is this. We are in red level crisis, okay? Earlier in the show, we broke down how the NRA has come out and, and pointed out the Federal Registry. That's where laws come from now, not from Congress, but just magically out of Obama that they're going to restrict any type of gun info. You can imagine plans, reloading, manuals, you name it. And you have to, quote, get permission before you can. And everybody starts going and getting permission, then they can start restricting it once they've set the precedent that people have complied. So it's a, it's, a, it's a major power grab, just like a land taking. If you can fence somebody's property off for 10 years and they can't stop you and they don't sue you, the land is yours. That's what they do with our rights under global common law. We don't stand up for ourselves, so we lose them. That's how these tyrants uh, operate. So what I wanted to get to is the fact that only Rand Paul, and the media calls it bold and incredible and a risky move, gets up and demands Obama release the secret text of the TPP. We've already gotten two subsections. Draconian attacks on freedom of speech. Draconian internet takeovers. Make SOPA and CISPA look you know, like nothing. Competition being shut down. Only globalists can operate. I mean, it's a nightmare. And we know there's gun control in there. Congress has warned that. The people that have been able to see it. People say, well, why doesn't Rand Paul just release it? He can't. You go into a locked room run by the Senate leadership, you can see it one page at a time, no photographs, no notes. That's how bad it is, folks. And I, I want WikiLeaks to release it all. They've had the whole thing for a long time. They've been doling it out. 
We're in a razor's edge fight against this thing. Here's the article out of The Hill. We have it blurred at Infowars.com. Uh, Rand Paul demands White House release trade deal text immediately. I'm a believer that we should read legislation before we vote for it. And in this world of deceit, that's a radical statement. That's a radical statement.